Hey guys, are you wondering what activities may hurt your chances at college admission? If so, that's what we're going to talk about in this video. Before we get too far into this video, what I first want to do is remind everyone to subscribe to our channel. If you haven't already, you can do that by clicking on subscribe below this video. The other thing that I want to remind everyone is that we have an awesome video-based prep series for the ACT. It's called the best ACT prep course ever. You can check it out now at supertutortv.com. It's over 50 hours of video instruction. I've coached a student to a perfect score on the ACT and many other students to perfect scores in individual sections. So if you're prepping for that test, it's a great way to get prepared. It's like private tutoring, but much more affordable. So go check that out. We're also coming out with the best SAT prep course ever this fall, fall 2018. So if you're studying for the SAT and you've got a little bit of time, sign up for our newsletter at supertutortv.com slash subscribe, and we'll keep you in the loop for when that drops. So before I get too far into this video, I know I have another video called Activities Colleges Don't Care About, and in that video, I really went over from my personal experience what kind of activities colleges don't necessarily see as like a bonus factor in admissions. But this video is different from that video in a few ways, and that's what I wanna talk about right now. The first way that this video is different from that video is that I'm going to be going over some ideas that actually might hurt your college application rather than just be sort of neutral forces that don't do anything. That's the first difference. And then the second difference is this is not about what I think, it's not about my opinion. It's literally about social science research or survey data that I've found from reading different articles and different sources. So let's get into this video. So the first category of activities that colleges tended to potentially discriminate against are activities that are deemed career oriented. Career oriented means that these extracurricular activities are the kind of activities that are getting you ready for a real world career. That could be a co-op work program that teaches you how to do things like auto mechanics or air conditioning installation or hairdressing, but it could also be some very well-known organizations like ROTC or JROTC, 4-H Club, or Future Farmers of America. This is based on research from a couple of Princeton sociologists, Thomas Espenshade and Alexandria Walton Radford. They've conducted research basically on college admissions and who gets in and who doesn't and what sort of forces may be at work in that whole college admissions equation. Here's what they found correlated. This is kind of crazy. They found that if you were involved in those activities and moreover, if you were in a leadership position in those activities, that you had a 60% less probability of being accepted to a top tier school. The authors of this study speculate that this trend may be due to the fact that colleges were worried that when students were really involved in these organizations that these students may not actually even want to attend university, that they may be on the fence whether even to go to college and that that kind of attitude may have been reflected in their applications and that might be why these correlate in that way. At the same time, others have said, oh my goodness, this is totally anti-red state discrimination. And what it's doing is it's marginalizing whites who may live in rural areas and keeping those people from admission to elite schools. And that's totally unfair. So the next kind of activity that might hurt you on your college application is what I will call online shenanigans. What I mean by that is being involved on the internet in some way on social media in a way that's identifiable that potentially makes you look bad. And this is based on a survey that was done recently of college admissions officers to competitive universities. So this isn't necessarily just elite universities, it's competitive universities, whatever that means. And they found that 30 to 40% of admissions officers had used internet searches at some point during their evaluation of students. They found that anywhere between 30 and 42% of the time, depending on the study that you looked at, that that internet search ended up hurting the applicant that they looked up online. So I think that's just a fair warning to say, when you're online, be careful. Don't say things that are inflammatory. Don't associate your names with controversy, whether it's political controversy, religious controversy, or otherwise. And similarly, if you're talking about, even positively, about other universities on your Twitter feed and saying how much you love that university, you've gotta be careful because Harvard doesn't wanna know that you're in love with Dartmouth. 
that's not going to convince Harvard that it should let you in. It probably will make them think, gosh, why should we admit you? You don't even like our college that much. So be really careful about the things that you post online. The other thing that I'll say though, is that some of these people who did search the internet said that what they found positively impacted their decision in favor of the student. So there's also like around a 40% chance that whatever you have online will help you. So just because you have some sort of online presence, maybe you have a YouTube channel, maybe you have a blog, maybe you have a very active Twitter account, just because you're involved online doesn't mean what you're doing is going to hurt you. But I do think it means that just like with everything else, you need to be careful when it comes to your digital footprint. Okay, and then finally, so my last kind of activity that may not help your college application and could actually hurt it would be doing stereotypically Asian activities if you are Asian. So don't shoot the messenger, please. This is just based on a study, okay? So a study in the Asian Journal of Social Psychology published in 2017 by Daniel Chai and Allison Wesley found that in a survey, and this was a hypothetical survey, mind you, it wasn't an actual survey. So this isn't based on actual data. It's based on a hypothetical survey, okay? In which they had admissions officers from competitive and selective colleges answer a battery of questions based on hypothetical situations. So they'd say to them, hey, here's hypothetical student A, here's hypothetical student B, tell me what you think their chances of admission are, right? So it's a survey. It's not actual admissions percentages, and so it could have bias in it based on what people think versus what people actually do, if that makes sense, okay? But what this survey found was that they had modeled essentially this stereotypical Asian American, and then they presented this student to these admissions officers, to half of these admissions officers, okay? And the stereotypical Asian American had activities that were, quote, stereotypically Asian American. These activities included playing the violin in a chamber orchestra, participating in School Science Olympiad Club, fencing, and participating on the math team. So those were like the stereotypically Asian activities. On the other hand, they also presented a non-stereotypical Asian American who had non-stereotypically Asian American activities. And those activities were playing drums in a rock band, participating in student government, playing baseball, and being photographer for the school yearbook. So these were their composite characters. And the way that they modeled their study is they had um, half the counselors were asked to evaluate two Asian American students, and one had the stereotypical activities and the other did not. And then the rest of the group was asked to evaluate two white students who had the same activity role. So basically what they found is that among the white students, the responses were very similar, right? The social competence factor judgment for these students that were white Americans was within range of each other, right? They were statistically, probably not statistically significantly different in terms of whether they had these stereotypically Asian activities or counter stereotypically Asian activities. The white students were like, all oh, cool, according to the people. But what they found is that when they judged the social competence of the Asian American students, when the Asian American students had the non-stereotypical activities, those students were actually judged to be more socially competent than even the white kids. But when they had the stereotypically Asian American activities, they were judged to be less socially competent than the white kids, if that makes sense. And less socially competent, obviously, than the Asian American non-stereotypical kid based on the activities. The other factors that they judged were what contribution of diversity would these students offer? Basically, the stereotypical Asian was not judged to offer much diversity to the college campus in comparison to the non-stereotypical Asian American. And the white Americans were judged to have less contribution of diversity overall as well. I don't know if there was statistical significance between the Asian American stereotypical activity kid and both white American kids, but there definitely was a discrepancy between that non-stereotypical Asian American and the stereotypical Asian American in terms of the activities role, okay? So what do you make of this and what do you do if you're an Asian American student and you do stereotypically Asian American activities? Well, my best advice is I've worked with students before who do have stereotypical Asian American activities, but who have spun those activities in ways that make them seem unique. So my best advice to you is if you're in that boat and you have the potential to be marginally 
uh, discriminated against because you're doing things that sound stereotypical, probably your best plan of attack is when you approach your essays to make sure that you seem like you are an individual and you are your own person and you're not just a stereotype. I'm not discouraging you from doing whatever it is that you love, but I am encouraging you to find what it is that makes you unique and find a way to tell that story even if your activities alone don't tell it. I hope you guys like this video. If so, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to our channel if you haven't already, and I will see all of you guys next time on Super Tutor TV. And if you missed our first video on activities colleges don't care about, go check it out, because there's more. I'll see you guys later.